Welcome to Team O'Neill. I'm Chris. I'm joined by the founder of the Rally School, Tim O'Neill, and we wanted a chance to break down some of the rallies that we've done the last few months. We've learned a lot, some failures, some successes, um, and then this video we're going to actually talk about the heat of Oregon. First off though, Oregon was a beautiful rally. Probably one of the best I've seen. I don't know in your experience, all the rallies you've gone to, just the views themselves are amazing. And then it got a little hot on race day, on the, the first full race day there. So I wanna talk with you a little bit about heat, some of the stuff I had to decide, some of the stuff that you went through. Um, but it's kind of like a highland desert, I believe they call it. You know, it's kind of beyond the, the coast. of Oregon, yes. So it's definitely not what most people think of when I think of Oregon and the Portland kind well, of area. Right. That part is, is, is flush with green trees and it's nice, yeah. So uh, one of my points of a rally car has to have windows up, right. has to have the exhaust and all the other components underneath that usually get smashed end up getting tucked right up underneath the floor really well so they protect it but that heats up the floor and the inside of a rally car with the windows up uh, i was told is over 160 degrees and you have fresh air in the roof and that's fresh air coming in but now if it's 80 90 degrees out now you have 90 degree air coming in as your fresh air so what most, yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I was at, I was still in New Hampshire and you flew out to work on your car from a little incident in, at Olympus and you were like, I need my cool suit. <laughs> like it was, you, you looked at the temperatures and realized it was gonna be hot for a race day. Right, and it was like, I know, it, it, even when I was younger and in better shape, uh, there were times where uh, they had to take me out of the car. When I pulled into service, I, I had heat stroke and I couldn't think and I had massive headache and I passed out just a moment so what I started using was the cool suit which is a uh, uh, has a cooler in a box full of ice with a pump and water in it and it pumps it through a hose into your t-shirt and your t-shirt has all these hoses as much it was developed I think by NASA to keep the astronauts cool hmm. and uh, so we used them and uh, this particular time I got my cool suit and I hooked it up but the co-driver decided he was tough enough he didn't need the cool suit hmm. And in most cases that works, but. Yeah, I didn't have a cool suit. My co-driver didn't have, my car is a little cooler than yours probably realistically. Ultimately with the Fiesta and the design of the exhaust, we, we are a little further away from it than you are. Um, so we were able to, and that was a testament to, we worked out a lot recently to be more in, in shape for rally. And, and that was a huge difference for me, um, just being able to manage my own heat and be able to tell when to slow down. And that was probably the other thing for this rally specifically for me is I was wanting to finish. I had two rallies before Olympus and Bristol that I both didn't finish either one of those rallies. Come to Oregon and it's really hot. And so a lot of my entire focus of this rally was trying to just be mental and be actually physically meant prepared to be in the car and, and actually um, finish. And so I had to pull myself back a lot. I wanted to go faster a lot. I wanted to push the car more. And then here on stage eight, the Great Horseshoe, um, we actually passed you here on the left. Uh, and your drive shaft, I believe, broke. Oh, I got a little overzealous. And you and Glenn, though, in this moment here, I'm pausing with you guys on the side. You have, every time I've passed you on stage, I've like cheered. You both looked drained, right? Like you both were either emotionally drained, but physically drained. And I was, and from the heat, I would think mainly, but you didn't even wave at me. You were, to, you were. It's rare that I know. Right, I know. So it so was different with you in that moment. And, and so and I thought. And mentally, yeah, I think the heat had still gotten to me because yeah. you're still, your head is in a helmet and right. your back is against the seat. You're not getting rid of heat any other way. Right. Well, and then so just a few seconds later after I pass you, my car actually dies right around this corner. And so what we ended up finding out was the ECU itself got so hot because I don't have venting in my hood. Um, so I was able to get around the corner here, shut the car off, turn the car back on and just did a re reboot and it worked. But I was so, again, focused on trying to finish a rally. I was so nervous this whole next stage, I drove fairly conservatively because I just didn't know what was wrong with the car. We get back to service and, um, uh, Ryan, our service crew chief, was able to, the uh, cylinder head temp sensor oh, yeah. is what he thought it was. Right. 
So we just pulled the hood off the car, right? Ultimately, we didn't have any other way to vent quickly, so we just took the hood off the car. And the car ran great for the rest of the rally. And that was probably the biggest thing I was finish. trying to finish. And I was finished. And, and the one thing that I always recommend to all our students, when, when you go rally, you've got to go to finish. Every time you need to be mindset. Because if you go to finish and you come around a corner and it seems a little sketchy, you're going to check up with the brakes. You're going to slow down a little bit. And that's going to, and then the corner is sketchy and you tightens up and you're glad you did. But if you go to win and you think, I got to win. It's my first rally. I got to win it. You're going to go into that corner like, I got to win. And the corner looks a little sketchy and the note's not quite right. You're like, ah, watch this. Hold my beer. You got to make sure. So you learn every rally you need to go as I need to finish this rally. Yeah. And I need to build up from there more because I definitely I had some really good success at New England Forest Rally last year. I came kind of and I took six months off effectively from Oregon, I guess. No, it's more than that. So from New England Forest Rally to Olympus is well, not April, like 10 or 12 months or 12, 10 months. Um, so a long time where I wasn't in the race car and I kind of came at Olympus with that same mentality, broke the axles, got too emotional, got to Bristol on pavement, doing all these things different car actually even didn't finish that rally so it was i had to kind of bring myself back down from my high at new england and i couldn't Humility. drive the same right and so. you need you need failure to kick you and get, make you humble but i also could understand why people quit this sport too at moments it's very right difficult. it's very hard and i am didn't even have i finished and i wanted to go faster and i wasn't even really happy like i was i felt i attained the goal but it was like i just you know, so that's why I want to go out and do more, right? From point A to point B, that's what we specialize in. Right. So that's hard. It's hard to manage your emotion when you want. It certainly is. Want to keep going. But so that, that was a little bit of breakdown of our Oregon rally. We appreciate you guys joining us for this video. If you want to see anything else or want to know any more about our rally experience, please let us know in the comments section. Have you guys had a chance to manage your heat or dealt with being hot in a rally car, drove through Death Valley, do something crazy like that? We'd love to hear your stories and comments. So I look forward to hearing from you guys and look forward to the next video. Thank you.